Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, this next guest, she walked in and she said she has a pistol in her bag. Ladies and gentlemen, Flame! Flame Monroe. Hey, Flame Monroe. Good morning. Now, now Good morning. if you've seen uh, my beautiful sister Tiffany Haddish's Netflix special, They Ready, then you've seen Flame Monroe. Uh, Flame, you have a fan in the room, Taylor. When we said you was coming, she was like, oh, I love Flame. I was, that's my only fan here? Oh, speaking of fans, I you brought you guys some fans. some more after you leave. <laughs> I brought fans. I brought you a fan, Envy. Okay, this is so for much. you. And I brought you this one, dear. What's okay. on this goddamn It's plan? appropriate for you. Well, I know. I know it's some bullshit. Let me Let see me if see. you can pop it. Now, it goes the weight of the fan. How you doing? The fan weight the of the fan. No, huh? the, weight the weight goes the this way. So if it falls this way, it goes like that. So you oh, okay. just hold the first rib and drop it. Oh, shit, so all the time y'all don't be popping your Envy already got No, you don't pop your ribs. Envy been doing this for a long time. Shut up, man. All right. Shut up. Envy got better dresses at the house than you. I guarantee it, Flame. Flame, I guarantee it. Charlamagne, let me, let me see. Do you see, do you see what that says, Charlamagne? Mother had you, mother love you, mother fuck you. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. I just got fan to flame. That's all yeah. you needed, because I got the one that's important. <laughs> Can't Available. no bitch do what I do. There you go. There <laughs> now, you go. Monroe, before I ask you who is Flame Monroe, uh -huh. uh, I have to talk about this booking email. He, she, we booking. He, she, we. <laughs> At gmail.com. Let me explain it. He, she, we. You see that? We. Yes. He, she, we. He, she, we. He, she, we. He, now, she, we is my pronoun. Okay. Because he cash a check, she get the money, we spend the same bitch right here. <laughs> he, she, we. One bitch. I, the man and me been pimping the woman and me for 25 years. Marcus Parker don't make no money, but Flame Monroe, that bitch is a killer. <laughs> Yeah, but checks don't come in Flame Monroe. Yeah, I had to ask because, like, every time uh, Tiffany would hit me about you, she would say he, she, we. And I'm like, I know y'all friends. That's but my own created pronoun because okay. the trannies of the gay community is so up in arms about the whole pronoun, what name you call me. Nigga, did the check clear? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's all yeah. I need to know. Well, who is Flame Monroe? A, a bad bitch. <laughs> That's too early to be in New York. It's cold. <laughs> I am. Well, put some goddamn uh, clothes on, Flame. I am dressed Nobody for Nobody told you to dress this like that. This is breakfast club. I was trying to entice you a little bit, Charlotte. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so what you thinking, Charlotte? <laughs> I want to know why they call you the god. There you go. Black men do uh, not cheat. Uh, okay. Oh, that's some new shit. I seen your show when you just said you just stopped cheating about a year ago. So yo, let's, let's go flame. there. What you doing? I do yo. watch the show, player. What you doing? Uh, I am a most important position I have in life right now is I'm a dad. I have three kids, uh, two 16 year olds and 12 year old uh, that are doing brilliantly excellent in school. I'm so proud of that. I'm a comedian, just a, a, a well-rounded whole person. Mm -hmm. I don't pigeonhole myself to say, oh, I'm this, I'm this. I'm a part of so many groups. I'm a black man. I'm a trans woman. I'm part of the LGBT community. Only four hours a day, though. Make sure y'all put that on record. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm somebody's daddy. I'm Flame, somebody's you're son. Yeah. You're Why? confusing me, Flame. I'm confused. Why only four hours a day? Because I still enjoy my F to M, my lesbian stud. So I'm only part of the LGBT community when it's a check involved. See, this shit right here is how I'm going to look right now. When this show is over, this wig going to be in the back of the lift, taking me back to my hotel. So you, you still sleep with women? Only. Only, okay. I don't fuck with all you. right, break this down for me. I, I need this all broken down. <laughs> I'm, co I'm confused, Flame. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't down. need y'all to be confused like that last set of trannies y'all had on here. Let me break it down. What? I am a very attracted <laughs> to very masculine. I, I, I'm gonna let, we get to that. I'm attracted to very masculine women and lesbian women that identify as men. Treat me like a woman all day, whether I'm in drag or not, except for the one hour dance. So 23 hours a day, they're my husband. So if you said like masculine men, I'm just masculine using- Masculine women. Masculine women, I'm using characters from movies. Mm -hmm. So like Cleo from Set It Off. Oh, Cleo from Set It Off kept me hard and wet at the same time. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Woo! But Jada Pinkett at the very end when she cut the braids off with the white for you, you know, that's my that's my look. That's what that's what my attraction. So I'm just letting you know. Yeah, Young yeah, M.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Young M.A.? Who? Okay, never mind. I didn't make sure Young M.A. Oh, I don't know who that is. Okay. I'm, I'm old school. I don't know these young ass rappers. Okay. Now, okay, you got three kids. Three. Two 16s and a 12 year old. Two 16s, not twins. Yeah, so two 16s. Is... They twins? No. Two months apart. I mean, seven months apart. Two different baby mamas, both named Tasha. Oh, it's a real nigga up under this wig. I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> I had two girls pregnant at the same time. I'm not saying I'm proud of that, but I got full custody of all three kids, so what? <laughs> So, I'm just so, saying, <laughs> don't let these titties and this wig fool you, nigga. <laughs> Look at that. We show up. <laughs> All three of us. <laughs> so this was before you decided to transition? No, no, no. no. Yeah, no. My children were conceived. I was like this. I was a little smaller. But I was like this. 
I was women are attracted to flame. The lesbian women are attracted, they're attracted to this flame, but you have to get to know the other person. So that was always the issue because this was always the, the hook. This was the bait. Mm -hmm. The hook came later. And the hook did come later. <laughs> so when did you, you know that? who you were? I caught it. I, I, I caught it. I've always known who I was. Oh. Uh, six years old. <laughs> so, I, mean, you can I always saw something was wrong. I, 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 we grew up in the go? I didn't need that one. Okay. You didn't <laughs> need that one. <laughs> we grew up in the projects in Chicago, and I was six years old. I was a huge All in the Family buff. I knew I was different. I knew I was girly, and I liked girl things and feminine things. So I watched All in the Family. They had a drag queen on there. May she rest in peace. Her name was Lori Singleton in real life, but her name, the character's name was Beverly LaSalle. Mm-hmm. And Archie saved her life in the show. Archie saved her in the back of the cab, gave her mouth to mouth resuscitation. He didn't know that she was a drag queen. She came to the house to pay and thank them. And um, she took a week off. He said, Well, how do Archie thought she's a prostitute? He said, Well, how do you girls like to be referred to as Miss, Mrs.? She said, How about Mr.? and took a wig off. I went in my bathroom and I cried for like an hour because then I knew that I was okay. I knew I was going to be okay. It was somebody else like me. Wow. So you used to like wearing women's clothes and stuff back then? Oh. Well, I didn't start dressing up as a girl until I was maybe nine or ten, putting on girl clothes. But mm -hmm. I would sneak and do it when my mother would leave. So it had to be tough in Chicago, though, right? No, no, no. This was seventies. It was much safer then than it is now to be a trans person. Gotcha. I'm, I'm gonna say that the truth, and and to be gay, cause we would fist fight. I was a fight ass. You see them hands? Mm -hmm. But everybody <laughs> lived to tell a story. Right now, it's these young kids. All they want to do is shoot and yeah. kill. I, I th this is what we need, and the youth need to have a good old fashioned fist fight. You whoop my ass, or I whoop your ass. Sometimes the person that you fight becomes your lifelong friend. That's right. Win or lose. Do you think kids are too soft now? I, <laughs> hell yeah, because of the keyboard gangsters. Everybody get on the keyboard. I hate you. I got a hundred dislikes. I I don't know a hundred people. <laughs> you can't tell me you're like me if you don't mean shit to me. It rolls off of me. Mm -hmm. So what would your identity be? What would you? I just. <laughs> He, she, I know, but I'm talking about like the technical, you know, ain't no, politically this, correct this terms, is, like bisexual, what is politically transgender. Correct. This is what it is right here. Talk to me. All of these labels and titles, you can identify as a blue orange cow, a pink moon, and a green. When you green get in the bed over. with somebody, do you want some penis or some vagina? Because they ain't got nothing else. I've been around the world three times. Mm -hmm. If they got some other shit and I ain't had it, I feel cheated. Now, what if there's somebody that just want butthole? Everybody got an asshole. That's what I'm saying. But, what but if everybody all, what if has all one. they want. It's that's not a that's not a gender. That's not a, a sexual organ. Yeah. That is your butthole. Yeah. That's you. But everybody has a gender, a penis or a <laughs> vagina. Mm -hmm. So are you transitioning now or? I'm wow. transit. I, I ain't changing. Every you I never punch took him in off. Fucking well, face, no, that's a real question. I, can't ask. I never took off anything. I've only added on. I you, never had a desire to take. So off you didn't anything. cut the you didn't cut your penis off. It ain't going nowhere. Did you just she me tell you she the had a hook? hook? <laughs> you you the one call it. Call him here. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't with that <laughs> you know he ain't all the way black, so he don't relate. I know, I know, okay. I know. I know. <laughs> 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 I'm black. You are not black. Real. You one of them. Oh, okay. Now, Flame, you know a thing or two about fake hair. <laughs> oh. Tell me something. Oh my goodness. Is that man got real hair? Yeah, that's his hair. Man, stop, Flame. Thank you. Flame, Flame. Flame well, show me, how you gonna put the man on flash? You got a damn hat on. That's well, right, I ain't got no hair? haircut. <laughs> I ain't got no haircut, and my hairline is start right here, in well, the middle you, of my you're head. You're not as young as you used to be. No, ma'am, I'm and 41. You're not, you're not as, you know, you're not as, you don't have that same um. So mm -mm. My, you might not be Charlemagne the God anymore. You might be like Charlemagne the, I used to be a God. <laughs> 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 that, I will always be a god. Oh, okay. But I have I'm gonna have to ask your wife about that. Where's she at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I take uh sea moss. Let me show you something. Uh oh. Now, you wasn't gonna make your dick hard. Let me show you something. I don't know. Not the sea moss, the right male here? replacement. The male, whatever it's what called. Is that? Oh, this sea moss and this goddamn male balance. Male balance. Woo. That might that sound like it'll make my beard grow back, but I might try that. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you, now, what did your kid no hold on, what did your kids think? This is all they knew. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, was yeah. always their dad like this. Or, so I never had to go through apologies or mm -hmm. excuses of, hell, when my children were young, because I've always been right there every day, they thought men without breasts were strange. Mm. So I used to live as a woman before they came, prior mm -hmm. to my children. I stopped living as a woman to dress like a guy because not just for the respect of my children, but for their friends. Because right. little kids are the meanest bastards on the planet Absolutely. and say the worst stuff to other little kids. Is it worse than honest, though? It's honest, but when when you're a kid at six and seven years old, you don't care about honest. You don't want your feelings. Because why your daddy got titties is an honest question. 
Well, they all know I was an entertainer. All my kids' friends know they're entertainers. Gotcha. We live in the whitest community in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And my children go to school with all white kids. All of, These are all well-to-do children, too, because we're not well-to-do. We, we hustling. But they like to hang out at our house. They call me Mr. Flame. I cook chicken wings for all the little rich kids. And mm -hmm. They just hang out at our house and play video games. So how do your kids deal with it? Because, I mean, kids are, like you said, all mean and nasty. So how do your kids my deal kids with it? My kids explain to people that I'm an entertainer. Uh, my kids know me. It, I don't like nobody that don't like me. So I teach my children that. If you somebody tell you they don't like you, broom their ass. Somebody else coming. As simple as that. But it's interesting, though, because you said to save your children from experiencing bullying, you try your hardest to revert back to a man. And you say, hunch my back to draw in my breath. So when I go to PTA meetings and stuff like that, because, you know, I just don't want people, and I wear oversized clothes. I, I just do what I have to do to make my children have as normal of life, of, of life as possible. Because, you know, the world is hard. Yeah, but that's not, I mean, it's not good for you, though. It's perfect for me. You I'm 50 so? years old. Oh, what okay, I need, okay, what okay, I okay. need to change some shit for? What I need to explain me for? I want my children to have a chance. Something that I never had until Tiffany Haddish came and saved the bitch. That's right. I want my children to have a chance. I got a son that's being courted by MIT that's going to get a full ride in 2021. I got a daughter that's the journalist of, journalist of a new high school newspaper. And I got a daughter in here that can sing Beyonce up under the table. So now let's, let's, we doing not, pretty good. Let's not go too far. Well, then you you think how you want. You think you a god, nigga. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> you got me twisted, player. Let you me say stop Beyonce you where you at. I was with you on. I love it. You and my that. daughter loves Beyonce. So Beyonce, this ain't no dig. We love you, B. Now, how did you meet Tiffany Haddish? How did y'all hook up? Oh my God, I met Tiffany Haddish at a club in L.A. The Comedy Union, where I'm having a show at this Tuesday, Shameless Plug, mm -hmm. uh, with some heavy hitters: Delay, Sherwin Array, and Memphis Will. Y'all make sure y'all watch that. Mm -hmm. Tiffany was there. We were both a lot smaller, and she didn't know I was. A comedian and she came up she was so cute and innocent she says excuse me can i ask you a question so adorable i said yeah she said you're a drag queen i said i am and then they called my name i went on stage blazed the room came off we just became fast friends oh. tiffany was genuine she was pure she was just a good girl all the way around pure spirit pure and when so when i went to do the tv show botch they fixed my boob because this left one used to gang bang it was leaning to the left <laughs> and they fixed my boobs i asked <laughs> tiffany to introduce me mind you this was pre-girls trip she had taped it but it hadn't Dropped yet. Mm -hmm. And I told the producers, I said, y'all keep an eye on this girl. She is a phenomenon. She's going to be a star. About four months later, Girl Show came out. It was over. So, and she said that night, she said, Flame, I think you're a star. If I make it, I'm going to come back and get you. Heard this from so many celebrities that right. I know. Ain't nobody stay true to their word but Tiff. So, Tiffany Haddish, I, I absolutely Tiffany. adore you, Tiffany lady. Tiffany a real one. I'll fight Tiffany. Tiffany is a whole woman. That's what you call a whole woman. <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, What's a, a bitch that's woman? faking and shaking and flaking. <laughs> yeah. But Tiffany, a whole woman, she stayed true to her word. Now, I, I, when I was talking to Ida last week. Uh, I love Ida Rodriguez. That's my partner. I had her on the Brilliant Idiots podcast, and she started talking about you. And I was like, I wonder what Flame thinks about Malik Yoba's situation. I don't think much of it. I can't keep up with the dicks I suck. I ain't going to keep up with his. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all. Uh, let me say about that. What I did watched, you think of when they was up here? I thought that interview was the most confusing shit that I've ever seen in my whole life. And I'm that? part of the LGBT, ABCDFG, PTSD community. <laughs> I am, because we want all the goddamn alphabets. But oh, it, the crazy. world is not going to see us until we see us. And that's just real talk. Malik, all that he was talking, he loves a woman, a beautiful woman with a penis. I'm a whole ass man up under this wig. Ain't no women with penises. They're just as that that was, and I was shocked at you. Let me just say, let me mm -hmm. put you on blast, cause mm -hmm. you go hard on everybody. You should have towed into that nigga's ass. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> you know, obviously <laughs> you didn't. Do, you are Angela. <laughs> you didn't want to into his ass. Well, I don't mean in that aspect. You know what I'm, I mean. I'm, 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 but I'm a, I'm a the beyond, questions a, that he was coming at, it sounded so far fetched, and all y'all were sitting here looking like a dog when you talk to him. I sports. felt the same way you felt. I was confused as shit. Even when he asked me, he said. Are you are you straight? And I'm like, yeah, but I know you about to tell me I'm not. You about to tell me some other shit. Ain't no. Let me t let me my trans sisters. I love you, trans sisters. Before I say this, all that shit about I'm trans attracted. Th there are beautiful women born in the world. This sister here, beautiful women mm -hmm. already made. So all that I'm a trans attracted. I'm attracted to a beautiful woman, not the sexual organ, nigga. The lies you tell. The men who are attracted to trans women feel like the bigger you are, the bigger you are. Bring They're not down. attracted to us because we beautiful mm -hmm. women with breasts. In their mentality, they feel like I'm not with a man because you got all the feminine parts, but you still got that tool that I need. That's just real of it. Mm. And I know some of my sisters are going to be upset with me, but bitch, y'all ain't going to do well, shit. Well, see, that's why you... <laughs> 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 but 
But that's why you got to have that conversation with them. All I'm there in situations like that is to listen. Just let them, let them, let, let, them, let, them, let them talk. Because I, I, to be honest with you, I can't tell them they're wrong. I can only tell them that's not what I learned growing the fuck up. Well, you know, I've been getting heat to say I'm not a full trans woman. And flame, I don't know how you identify, but I feel like a, I'm a whole woman. I'm a real woman. I didn't learn how to be a girl from watching a, a boy. I learned how to be a girl from watching a woman. My mother, my aunties, my grandmother. That's real. That's how we learned how to be girls. So first of all, let's give the respect back to the women. We are female impersonators. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be a woman. Even if I get a, a, a SRS, I still wouldn't be a woman. It's not going to bleed. I still have to have electrolysis in it before I even get it. I'm not going to have any children. And you still got to lube it up. It kind of defeats the purpose because as a connoisseur of the very beautiful for JJ. When she wants you, you know she wants you. It's running down her legs like lotion. Well, see, Flame, it that's why, it's, it, to be honest with you, that's why more people need to give a platform to you. I don't want no platform. I don't want to be no, the spokesperson. But, but, no, but I don't <laughs> want you to be the spokesperson, but God damn it, can somebody talk some reality sometime? Listen, like, that's the, that's how, that's the reality of the situation. But do you know how much bashing I get and am going to get behind this in my inboxes? So wow, imagine how much wow. imagine how much we get. We're not a part of the community. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, Charlemagne, I got about 20 messages more. Test Charlemagne ass up. I say, Charlemagne is a cool dude. Y'all just got y'all. Oh, are I tight. thought you meant like wanted to fuck me. I was oh, almost no, no, no. I was flattered for a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> My God. Like, Security, I'm in a tech man this nigga over here who think he a guy. <laughs> I was like, oh what? It's sounding quite 5150. I, like, <laughs> I was like 20 emails. I'm hiding them. Oh, the queens the like playing tetra. I don't know why they asked you, Charlemagne, because people will not allow people to be. And I keep saying, the world is not gonna see us. We keep asking for inclusion, inclusion, mm -hmm. inclusion, inclusion. And if you force feed anything on anyone, you make them hate it. The right. gay community, my community, my community, we are forcing, take us, see us, accept us, let us be with you. I don't, you don't need to get down with my lifestyle. Mm. That don't mean I can't be your neighbor. I can live That's next real. door to this nigga. I ain't got to go to his house for barbecue. He probably don't season his food right anyway. I ain't got to go to his house for barbecue, but I can't, we can coexist in the same right. neighborhood if I stop trying to put my lifestyle to make him accept what I am. I don't ask him what he doing. My business ain't his business. His business ain't my business. But that ain't what we want. You we know why want. we could coexist? Because you like to laugh and talk shit. And at the end of the day, that's all everybody wants to do. And if we can laugh and talk shit, we good. I don't give a fuck what you are or what you do. We overly sensitive as a people. The nation is becoming overly sensitive. Yeah. That's what's happening to comedy. Everything is so censored. You can't say this. You can't say that. You can't offend this group. They're going to stop burning flags in front Lord, of your house and throwing marches and shit. Oh, my God. What did you think about Dave Chappelle's? Uh... I thought that Dave Chappelle was wonderful. I'm a yeah. fan of Dave Chappelle's. And the nigga was spot on with what he said. He only had one thing wrong with the LGBT what community. He said that it was the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender was in the car. Not true. Gays drive, lesbians in the passenger seat, bisexuals in the back seat. Trady's not even in the car. Mm. We on a side car riding with them. They only pull us out when it's time for a benefit or some entertainment or parade. But we are not allowed to go into the boardrooms to make decisions on what's happening to our future, to mm. our health care or to our housing, to our mental status. Mm. They don't do that for us. The gay men put us back on the outside because it's, it is a pecking order in every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. And it's still a gay white man in America, still a white man in America. Mm. He can have a purse and a pair of shoes every time he opens his mouth. A Louis Vuitton can fall out. He's still a white man in America. He still got that privilege. Boom! Yeah. There it is, right yeah. there. Yeah. What about um patriarchy? Because I always think like in a way it seems like sometimes, like especially when it comes to sports, right? When you see these men competing in these women's sports and dominating, yeah. I'm like that don't seem right. That's to not me. right. That's like it's like That's you're trying right. to erase their existence. Let me start some shit. That is not, that is definitely not right. And if you watch my coffee time blogs on YouTube, on, on YouTube, I always say that's just a man beating a woman's ass for free. Mm. That is because you can change. You still born a male. We still physically stronger. You can take hormones for two years. I could be hormoned out, pickled. I still won't have my penis. I'm still gonna have testosterone running through my body. It's just not. It, like we always say, we want inclusion, then create a lane for Olympics. Create a whole thing for trannies to be compete and do whatever they want to do. But stop putting these men against these women. It's just not right. right. It's not right. And that's yeah. not a proper word. We can't use that word. That I can. Yeah. I'm part of the black community. I'm part of, I can say nigga. I can say fag. <laughs> I can, uh, Look, I'm part of so many different communities. I can say vagina. I can say cut. I'm, see, I'm a, I'm a well-rounded bitch. You are problematic, <laughs> Flynn. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Did you see what my fucking... Can't no bitch do what I you do. You gotta understand that. that if, every, <laughs> if everybody had this mantra and this motto, except with me and you can change the word to bitch to player or whatever you call yourself, 
You will only be focused on what you're doing. You're right. I'm not got time to focus on what this man is doing or what this lady is doing. I'm only focused on me. I'm in competition with me. All right. That's it. When did you decide that you can combine like the best of both worlds, the, being a drag queen and comedian? Like, when did you think? I don't, I don't even know how that happened. It was happenstance because I hosted the drag shows in Chicago for 17 years. So and and had 300 people come out on a Monday night in a blitz. They would come to see me. We went to the comedy club as a dare one night. All jokes aside, I missed that club. Mm -hmm. And I was on house arrest. I had my band on my leg and everything. House arrest for what? I we get to that. Uh, and uh, <laughs> the 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 host Damon Williams started joining me from the stage and I was in the audience. I told that ass up. He said, come up here. I went up there, talked shit. I said, okay, player, don't cross the line. I pulled my pants leg and said, nigga, I'm on house arrest. The place erupted. I knew then I was supposed to be a comedian. Wow. Wow. So now why was you on house, house arrest? arrest? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were waiting to get to that question. I don't know. I feel like I'm being attacked. I'm being double teamed. Is this a threesome? <laughs> you say you don't like dick. Uh, what day is it though? <laughs> 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 I tried on Fridays. No, I'm just <laughs> Uh, I was went to jail. I was the slickest red bitch on the planet. I used to rob banks uh, with paper trail. No paper trail. Not with a gun. That's when you fell in love with wigs. No, no, no. I was already doing drag. Oh. Um, this was I was very young, though. We, we used to create accounts and just all that. I never got caught. I had a rich, ter terrorizing-ass boyfriend uh, who caught, got jealous of me and put me in prison. So the, Hold on, boyfriend now? I, I, had a, I had a husband, a boyfriend. So you done tried a little bit of everything. I just said I have been around the world. Uh, and I, yeah, yeah. Me and Prince Harry got that whole <laughs> black girl magic thing down to a science. Got you. Um, and he told on me, so the judge Your sentenced boyfriend me. told on you? Yeah, he did. He was, he's got on drugs. It was it was a mess. But I was in love with that fool. Um, he They sentenced me to three and a half years. This was in 91. Um, there was no trainings. I had brand new titties. I was a size six, young, my own rear head to my shoulders. The judge, Judge Joan M. Corboy, I'm telling y'all her name because there's a reason. They, uh, She sentenced me three and a half years. I did 48 days in the state prison. And the judge, the warden came in day 46 and said, are you Parker B? I ain't going to give y'all the rest of those numbers. I said, I am. He said, bitch, you coming out of my prison. You got these niggas uneasy. Two days later, I did 11 and a half months in my house on house arrest. But I was able to go out and everything because there was no place for me. Interesting. Now if I go to jail, they got a whole wing of bitches like me. That just killed me. Don't put me with a whole bunch of hoes like me. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> this was a d different time. And the judge that sentenced me to jail, after I got out in 48 days, I went back to the courthouse just to see her. Because I was supposed to do a whole year. Just to see her. I sat in her courtroom and, and just looked at her. Three, three weeks later, she died in a freak accident in Florida. She was killed by an electrical gate. You put voodoo on that one. I did not. You I had absolutely lie. nothing to do with that. Electrical what? An electrical gate. You know how you push the thing and the gate closes? The gate kept going and going and going and going. The family sued and got $20 million. I wasn't in Florida. I had nothing to do with it. That's my story. And I'm sticking to let me it. Stick on, let, me, let me stay, stay yeah, on playing yeah. Blitz Island before she put I that in my purse. I ain't got no booty. I'm from Chicago, wind. not from New Orleans. Shit. Jeez. You've been around the world. You learned no, something. It just, I'm sure if she had did me, like she had a 97% conviction rate. She was sending everybody to jail yeah. for your first time being offended. So she was, she was yeah, she she gone. When you used to rob banks, you used to wear disguises? I didn't go in with a gun. I did everything over the, over the you know, with paper. This was pre-computer, pre-all of this. So put the money in the bag. Put, no, no, Pass no, the note. no, no, no. That was like that. I would open accounts in fictitious name. I was. It was more deceptive practice. Oh, mm. but got we you. would do, get oodles and goodles. But yeah, write checks. I never wrote checks. No, I only wanted to cash. All that check writing shit. You would go write. You go steal a bank ten thousand dollars, then go to Walgreens write a six dollar check and take your dumb ass to jail. Who does that? Now hold on. I want to read this. Um, uh oh, this headline I saw the other day. I don't. Let me from let, Fliggy Flame. Let me get ready for it. Flame oh. said, <laughs> "You got your glasses on." This is the Jasmine oh, brand. Shade. Says Monique, Flame Monroe lashes out at comedian, questions her husband's sexuality. <gasps> Who is daddy calling daddy? Ooh, say it again. Now, why? What made you go so hard on Monique? I didn't. Go, now, if you, when you see the full interview, I didn't go hard on Monique. Mm -hmm. What I did was told my story. Mm -hmm. What she did to me. I ain't wait till after she was dead, Robin Crawford. I ain't wait till after they was gone. They couldn't refute what I said. So this is what I, I have not seen Monique since the incident has happened, or else I would have brought it to her. But let me tell you how good I am with my receipts. I called John Mons before I did that to say, if she calls you, can I use your name? I said his actual name on the show. Y'all only see the clip. You'll see the whole video today. I said his name for the receipts. He said that he he would verify and back up exactly how it went down because I wasn't even at the meeting. I was packing my house. 
when she did what she did. So I told the story of what she did because everybody wants to give Monique a pass and feel sorry for Monique. I'm not, I think Monique is very talented. But, bitch, don't take money out of my mouth. You don't know me. You don't know what I was going through. And for you to say that you couldn't work with me because of my lifestyle, you never even asked me my real name. She you said never this is why I didn't get the job. She told John Mons and the people at D.C. at the radio station, because I love radio. I've always done radio in Chicago, so I wanted a job in radio. This was 98. We weren't even transparent. So for a tranny to get a job on the radio, it was a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, but that's because you're really good, though. You well, thank you, thank I can you. Tell just by this. But she did that, and so I'm packing the house because we had already went through everything. John Mons called and said, hey, Flame, what you do to Monique? What are you talking about? Man, we had a meeting. She threw you under the bus, said she couldn't work with your lifestyle. and boo, boo, boo. So I hadn't seen Monique. So that was my first opportunity to have a chance to say it. But she's on the road with a young lady named Jess Niche, who I worked with a month ago in Columbus, Georgia. I told Jess Niche the exact story I told on the thing and gave Jess Niche my number. Say, tell her to call me. She didn't call me. So since you didn't call me, I just put it out there. Daddy just happened to be collateral damage. I was just joking. I don't know that, man. I ain't never met Daddy. I don't know what they, what kind of relationship they have. I was just, it looks a little suspect to me. So you said this was 1998. <laughs> yes. What was Monique doing at the radio station? I know she used to do radio later on. What was she doing there then? She was, we had got hired to work in D.C. It was John Mons, Monique, and Flame Monroe. Okay. And here's the irony. Six months after the show, all the fat girl jokes didn't work no more. They bought out a contract because the ratings had ploop, plopped and wow. got rid of her. Wow. And y'all have So I don't know if she was intimidated by my presence. At that time, I was a size six. I was a damn piece like you wouldn't believe. I don't know if she was intimidated by my talent. I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But whatever it was, what you did was some foul shit because I right. had a job. You took a job away from me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have any children. But at that time, I was trying to build my career in radio because radio is so much more than sitting here. Mm -hmm. And people don't know that side hustle radio, mm -hmm. them endorsements and them shows that you hold, that's the money right there. Absolutely. That's the popularity. <clears throat> so I don't think that it was fair that she did that. And that's what I said. So I never called out her name. I never threw her under the bus. I just told the story the way it happened because it's my story to right. tell because she did it to me. That's interesting though because you don't really hear that perspective from black women is usually a, a man saying, oh, I don't I want work that, her, that lifestyle is making me uncomfortable. You don't really hear that from... Sister. Well, let's check her track record for the last two, three years on her slow demise. She's been throwing everybody up under the bus and some heavy hitters. So you have to ask yourself, if she did it to me in 98 and I was just a little Rudy Poop nobody, how many other people have she done it to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Throughout, yeah. I'm sure there's some other stories that's way worse than mine. Yeah. Right. But I ain't never scared. So the clap back, come on with it because it ain't what you say to me because this right here... And this right here, this is the this is the uh, the the library, and this is the arsenal. Come on, let's go. Go ahead. But man. I ain't going back. I'm done. I'm not going back and forth. I said what I said. And it's over. it's over. I'm done. So they can say whatever they need to say. Hopefully, you and Monique can you know squash well, that or have a conversation. You know, I don't. I don't. I think she's so talented, and I think that everything that she has said has blown up in her face because remember she wanted to boycott Netflix because they were gender biased and sexual biased. They ready. You got a Latin, Latin woman. You got a black woman married to a white man. You got Marlo's ghetto ass, who I adore. You got Shantae Wayans, who is a open lesbian. Then you got this transgender bitch right here that's black and a woman and some. So we just, Netflix has just covered all the bases that you said that they were not. Then you got Wanda Sykes and Paige Horowitz, who was partners in it, both lesbians. Then, and Tiffany Haddish, another black female. So uh, what you said that they what? They're sexual bias and gender bias? I cover all that damn near by myself. But you got all this whole barrage of people. And you got, look, you got, don't let me dispute April Macy, the white girl. So they never, they ready covered everything. Yeah. So that kind of shoots in the foot what she said. Y'all should check out They Ready on Netflix, Absolutely. man. Yeah. Famous. I'm Girl, number two. You playing. are hilarious. Am I done? I mean, oh, I don't get the whole hour that Malik got? <laughs> that, that shit went on too long, don't you think? <laughs> no comment. Oh. All right. Look. And plus it was four of them. Say that again. <laughs> These are the shade glasses, y'all. When you don't want to talk about, put the glasses on and be like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Give me your Twitter and Instagram, Flame. Hey, Twitter is Flame Monroe. Instagram is Monroe Flame. I have a YouTube channel, y'all. Please subscribe. I got a Coffee Time video that I do every day. I talk about everything, mostly politics and just real shit. Uh, what else I got? Oh, my, my Facebook name is my whole legal name. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Marcus Flame Monroe Parker, the whole damn name. Do you ever play jokes on people and put your hands on your titties? You sound because like, you that, sound like you want to be the first. No, one that contrast it. is wild. Like your hands are like nigga hands, but them titties are like sitting right. 
Should I touch you the right way? It's Charlemagne. Yeah, it's Charlemagne. Oh. You know, that ain't do nothing for you, Charlemagne. No, it didn't. Uh, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> I had this nigga calling me daddy. Y'all really don't know. There you go. <laughs> Hold on. Come, come on. Come on with come on. Wrong way, player. Block you out. Real quick. <laughs> It's Flame Monroe. Hit me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charlemagne. Thank you guys yes, so indeed. much. Yes, indeed. It's the great. Breakfast Club. Good morning.